Welcome to the options presentation February 2022. Please note that option booklets will be emailed to parents and students from 4 p.m. this afternoon. Please watch this presentation prior to looking through the option booklet. The aim of this presentation is to provide a brief overview of post-16 information, but above all to explain the options booklet and the processes involved. First, a word from Mr. Clements, who is the deputy head who oversees our sixth form. He has put together a very short presentation for you on from year nine to post 16. So please go to the link sent in the email to find out more from Mr. Clements and then return to this presentation. At Grey Court, we see the option choices as a process and the process really begins specifically in January. And in January, students had personal development and wellbeing sessions on making choices. In February, Kingston College came into the school to present to year nines the explanation on the different types of qualifications that there are both at GCSE and at A-level. Following this, year nine students have been completing a post-16 survey, and I'll be referring to some of the findings of the survey in this talk. On the 10th, you had the parent consultation evening and hopefully there was the opportunity to have a brief discussion with some of the teachers about your child's suitability for taking a subject further into GCSE. And today, the 24th, is the options presentation, which for the second year in a row, we are having to do online to parents but we're very, very pleased to be able to have seen the Year 9s live in assembly at the end of the day today, during which I explained the option process to them. In March, the 2nd of March, which is on Wednesday, it is our activity day and the focus for Year 9 is a careers networking event, a financial awareness workshop and the very exciting stock market challenge. It's a great day and I'm sure your children are going to get a lot out of it. From the 4th of March, we start one-to-one face-to-face -to -face student interviews about their option choices. So all of the Year 9 students will be invited to meet with a member of the senior leadership team to discuss their options and just make sure that they understand the processes and the thinking involved. Then on the 22nd of March, the choices form on which the children will be choosing their options will open for submission. It will not open prior to the 22nd. And this is to make sure that people don't make up their minds too quickly, that they go through the process and it's a considered decision. The deadline for submitting the form is the 24th. And there will be prizes for the tutor groups that get their forms in on time. And also, please be aware that if your form comes in late, I might have to make your decision for you. And I'm sure none of you want that. However, what I will add is that in all the years that I have been doing this, I've never ever had a late form and I'm quite sure I won't have a late form this year. Then once the forms and the choices are all in, uh, we spend time trying to allocate these, trying to make them work, trying to make them fit, fitting into the timetable. And if there are any problems between April and July, that is when I will meet with students individually, contact parents if I need to, so we can make sure that everything is going to work as planned. In June, we have the end of year nine exams. And following this, early July, we will be writing home, confirming the option choices that have been allocated. So a little bit about this year nine cohort. They are extremely able, 50% of them are expected to attain top grades seven to nine at GCSE. One of the questions that I've asked the year nines in the post-16 survey is at this stage, how many of them are planning to go to university? And obviously a clearly capable and aspirational year group because 81% of them are saying that they do want to go to university. So I think at this point, it is timely to give parents some advice and the advice is start saving. In our changing world, 
it is also interesting to find out what career aspirations young people have. We all know that we are dominated by a world of social media and that our young people are spending more and more time online and their online offline lives have merged. There's no longer a difference between online and offline worlds to young people. So it's interesting to see how many of them are looking for careers in this new world that we are encountering every day. Before we look at what the year nines have said, I think it is also interesting to put this in perspective of some of the jobs that did not exist 10 years ago. And I wonder how many parents have heard of some of these. Well, a cobot is a robot that works alongside a human in a career or a job role. I'm sure some of you have heard of a number of these, a web analyst, um, social media people, the influencers, they have a big role to play these days. Um, something a bit more unusual would be a senior move management role, which is really about helping our growing and elderly population be able to maintain an independent lifestyle. They say that 70% of jobs that will exist in the next few years have not even yet been invented. And this therefore causes a bit of a challenge, creates a challenge for parents and for educators. How can we guide or, or educate or prepare our young people for the world of work when we don't know what the world of work is going to look like? So what have our year nine said they want to do? Now, bearing in mind they are year nine, they're 14 years old, and they will change their minds as they get older. But it's interesting to get a snapshot of what they're thinking about at the moment. While a number of them are not sure, we can see what the majority of those who are thinking of careers have said they want to do. And I think what's quite interesting about this word cloud of careers is how traditional it still is. We still have the doctors and the scientists and the lawyers and the architects. Um, we have the footballers every year. We have a number of children who want to be professional footballers or, or have a role in sport. I think that the, the number of children who have said they want to be involved in social media or game design, you can see it's an emerging pattern but possibly I was expecting that there might be more of that. So it's interesting to understand why there isn't. A, a number of them want to be models, um, which is something that we don't often get. And of course, every year without fail, I get the Jedi Knight. Every single year, there's at least one child who tells me that he or she would like to be a Jedi Knight. Our curriculum is put together with the intention of keeping doors open. We know that children develop and grow and mature at different rates and that their interests will change as they get older. So we need to make sure that our curriculum is aspirational, that meets the needs of a number of different learners, but also ensures that every door is opened so that choices are available later on in life. The aim, uh, or the intent, our, our curriculum intent is an inspirational and aspirational curriculum that meets the needs of a diverse range of learners and offers them opportunities to progress beyond grey court. So what does this mean in terms of what students can do at GCSE? Well, the key thing to understand that this is about quality and not quantity. There are only a limited number of subjects that will fit into a school timetable. And what is important is that they get eight top grades. To move on to the next phase of their education, they need quality of grades, not quantity of subjects. And at grade court, students will take between eight and 10 GCSEs. And I'll explain to you where this difference comes from. So what we have is the core curriculum. This is the curriculum that every child is expected to follow. Um, that's to do with the government, the national curriculum, and there's a logic behind it when you see what these subjects are. So every child for GCSE is required to take an English language GCSE 
and an English Literature GCSE. And that gives you two discrete GCSE grades. They all have to do mathematics. That's one GCSE, though the most able mathematicians, those in the top set, the number of those will take what we call a further maths qualification, which is another qualification. It's a bridging qualification between GCSE and A-level maths. And that would be an extra a grade achieved at the end of year 11. In science, there are two pathways. One is the combined science and the other is the separate science. Now, we do get a lot of questions about science and the difference between these two courses. So in a moment, I'll go into a little bit more detail with you. There is also what we call core PE, core physical education. Every student has to do a double period of PE a week. At key stage four, there is the requirement that students do some religious studies and computing. We don't offer this within the timetable as a core subject for all year 10s and year 11s. We will deliver this through drop down sessions, assemblies and other means, but we do offer them as options. So if a student does want to carry on with religious studies, that is one of the GCSE options. If they want to carry on with computing, that is one of the GCSE options. But all year 10s and year 11s will experience these two subjects in some form over the course of Key Stage 4. They also will continue with PDW, Personal Development and Wellbeing, in tutor times and drop down sessions. And the Sex Relationships and Health Education program is also something that we are required to deliver. And we do this again in tutor time and drop down sessions. So a little bit more about science. The combined science is two GCSEs, which combine physics, chemistry and biology, while the separate science is three separate GCSEs, one in physics, one in chemistry and one in biology. The amount of time in the timetable is the same. It is not one of the options offered. It is what the students do within their science timetable. If you want to find out more about this, please go to the link that was sent to you in the email, which is a short explanation presentation by Ms. Moran, who is the head of science. Ultimately, it is the science department who will decide which course the year nines will do when they take their year 11 GCSE in science. So what does this leave us with? Well, within the school day and the school week, it leaves the opportunity for four option choices. Each option is three periods a week and the students can choose four. They cannot choose five. They choose four because four fits into the structure of our timetable. The different types of qualifications that we offer, we offer the traditional academic theoretical GCSEs, but we also offer a number of vocational qualifications, which are called GCSE equivalent qualifications. They count exactly the same, but they have more of a vocational element, an emphasis on the workplace, an emphasis on the practical side of learning. So the way that they are assessed and delivered is slightly different. And we offer music technology, creative media, health and social care, health and fitness, and graphic design. Please be aware that if you have a child who previously studied music technology, this is a new course, it's a new specification, and it is quite different. Uh, there is uh, further information here about the award in music technology. And I think the important thing is that students need to have a real passion and interest in music technology, understand how the technology works, and also be willing to learn music theory. It's not the same as the, a, as the GCSE in music, but they will be required to learn some music theory, which I think is one of the key differences from the course that um, existed prior to this new course. It is a vocational course. There's a lot of emphasis on the practical and on the workplace. But we will require the students who wish to do this course to show that they have an interest. Maybe they play a musical instrument. Maybe they have created their own music. Um, but also that their year nine music teachers support their wish to do this subject. 
I think the best way to find out if the subject is right is that the um, music technology teacher is very willing to run a practical taster session and this will be held on Wednesday the 16th of March from 3 to 4 p.m. in the Ingenium. So if your child is interested, please encourage them to go to this practical taster session. So what are the entry criteria for some of these subjects? It is all explained in detail in the booklet. Please do look through this information carefully because PE is a very popular subject, but the GCSE is not suited to everybody. So look at the entry criteria and please be aware that the PE department will make the final decision on whether or not this is the right course for your child. If it is not the right course, we offer the vocational qualification in health and fitness, which is a very popular course. So there is something for everybody, but it might be that we need to, the PE departments will, more, will decide which is the most appropriate course for your child. Drama is uh, requires a lot of engagement, a lot of participation. And if your child did not engage or participate at Key Stage 3, this is not the right subject for them at Key Stage 4. I've already discussed music technology, but music GCSE, they are required to play a musical instrument or sing to a certain level. So please do look at the relevant pages in the option booklet where all of this is explained in detail. Computer science, again, a very popular choice at GCSE, but students will require a good grade in maths by the end of year nine in order to be allowed onto the computer science course. So look again at the information in the booklet. We do offer the most able students the AS politics. They can choose this as one of their GCSE options. It is a much more advanced course than GCSE. It is an AS. And most students take AS in the sixth form, not at GCSE. But for those who are really passionate about politics and who achieve solid grade fives in both English and history at the end of year nine, might find that this course is suitable for them. So please, again, look at the entry criteria. Don't choose AS politics if you struggle in English or you struggle in history because there's a lot of extended writing analysis and independent work required. It is at a higher level than a GCSE subject. So the kind of questions we encourage the Year 9s to ask themselves in looking to see which courses they should choose for their GCSEs are what do they need in order to access post-16 education? What careers are they thinking of? And are those careers right for their academic ability, skills and interests? We have a number of children who say they want to be doctors but they are not achieving the highest grades in maths and science. To be a doctor, you need to be getting, by the end of year 11, those grades eights and nines, really, in maths and science. And again, how balanced are the choices? Are they going to open doors or restrict choices in later life? So in order to ensure that students have these opportunities available to them, and don't limit their choices or opportunities when they leave school. We have a curriculum that is designed to open every door. At Grey Court, we value languages, we teach a number of languages, and it is our policy that students continue to take a modern foreign language for GCSE. This is an expectation. There are some exceptions, and the exceptions are based on your prior attainment, how you did a key stage two, how you're doing at key stage three. But please understand that this is Great Court's curriculum policy, that the vast majority of students are expected to continue with the language. We will make exceptions for those where there are valid reasons. Possibly they um, are on the SEN register or they struggle academically. So there are three different booklets that are being sent out and they're personalized. The booklet that your child will receive will have your child's name on it. And the three different booklets are firstly, 
the majority of students will receive a booklet which is going to expect them to choose one language, one humanities, and then two free choices. There are some students who will receive a booklet which requires them to choose a humanities and then three free choices, and they could choose a language if they wish to. So there's no restriction on them choosing a language. It is more about what they must choose. And then there is a very small number of students for whom they, we, we feel that the free choices option is the most suitable. They can choose a language, they can choose a humanities, but the choice is up to them. They are not expected to choose a humanities. They are not expected to choose a modern foreign language. So the booklets that have been allocated are based on prior attainment and also are about what you must choose, not what you can't choose. So even if you get the four free choices booklet, you could still choose a language and you could still choose a humanities subject. At the back of each booklet, there is a list of the subjects available and it explains how you will choose them. And there's also a link to the Google Choices form. So that link, if you click on that link, it will take you to the Google form on which you will indicate your subjects for GCSE and submit it. But please be aware this form will not open until the 22nd of March. So don't try and fill it in too early. We want the decision to be considered. We want a lot of thoughts and efforts and time and advice to go into this decision. So we will not allow you to make these choices before the 22nd of March. The form will go live on the 22nd of March. We will email you the link to the form to remind you, but the email will go to the students. Parents cannot fill it in. It has to be filled in via a great court email address. So the email will go to the students. They will discuss their choices with you. You can certainly help them fill it in and you will receive, the parent will receive confirmation of the choices that their children have made. So you can check it. And if it isn't what you discussed, then you can get in touch with us, well, with me in particular, and we can discuss that further. So please be aware that there is the link in the booklet, back last page of the booklet, there is the link to the form. The form will not open until the 22nd of March. The deadline is the 24th of March, and we will send a link to the choices form the day before the 22nd. So on the 21st, your child will get an email with the link to the form that they need to fill in. So just to summarize that you can see the link on the last page of the booklet, we will email the link to the students. It can only be completed through a school email account. It will go live on the 22nd of March has to be in by the 24th of March, and parents will receive an email of the choices that their children submitted. So we do need reserves because not all combinations are possible. It is simply not possible to put every single option of choice into our restricted timetable. But I will say that very rarely do I need to tell students that they cannot do their first choices because we work very, very hard to try and make all of this fit in. Please also be aware that there might be a limit to numbers in some subjects. And also, if too few students choose a subject, it might not run. And if too many students choose a subject, then the allocation will need to be by lottery. So the really important reminder is that the Google Forms must be returned by the 24th of March. This is the deadline. We start immediately to input the data and work on the allocation of the options. If you have any questions regarding the options or this presentation, then please do submit your questions via a Google form. The link to the Google form is being sent to you in the email along with this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and I am sure that your children will give this due consideration I can assure you they will have lots of support and guidance from their teachers.